This is the Simply Love Jesus podcast, where we explore life and faith through the lens of one question, which is what does it mean to simply love Jesus? I'm your host, Caleb Davis, and we are here for another week, and we are concluding our series on taking back religion. This is the final episode, episode six. We've been in a six-part series in this in this idea of taking back religion and pushing back against the pushback of or, against organized religion. So, <laughs> uh, if if this is your first time tuning in this podcast, just so grateful that you have tuned in with us and and hopefully are learning and you are uh, just getting some some interesting thoughts to think to think about and maybe discuss with your friends. Uh, you can follow this podcast and and everything that we do through Simply Love Jesus by either following us on Instagram or Twitter at SLJ Ministries. And I have some unfortunate news. Unfortunate news. Uh, typically, I'm joined by a co-host. His name is Aaron Collier. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Aaron uh, he mess he uh, talked to me today. And unfortunately, Aaron is not going to be on the podcast until January, so until the New Year's. He's he's pretty busy right now with church and family and, and everything that goes with that. And and I most of our dedicated listeners are are pretty oh, probably aware of that because there's been you know a couple of times sporadically he's been unable to join us. And I think just the you know the busyness of life is getting the best of him, and so he's got to kind of prioritize. So, yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but you know what? The flip side is, while Aaron may be out uh, for a little while, he'll be on a little hiatus. Uh, hopefully, we'll be we'll be seeing some new some new guests on the show. Uh, some hopefully some some former students of mine, some of my disciples. They are hopefully going to be joining onto the podcast, and we'll get to hear some multiple inputs. Uh, to be frank, because I don't like doing this by myself, <laughs> I don't. I I like having some other people to soundboard off of, and and kind of dis and make this a discussion less of just me talking to you, lovely lovely people who won't hear this until uh until the, until this episode comes out. And so, <laughs> but you know what? That being said, uh, just so grateful for Aaron and his desire to be a part of this podcast and this community. Um, you know, Aaron's he's my best friend, and so he's he's continued to invest in me and believe in what God has called me to do and sharing this question, which is what does it mean to simply love Jesus and how I believe it can and will shape how we pursue a relationship with Jesus and how it shapes how we treat the people around us and ultimately how I believe it will shape the church as we know it. And and I believe God has called me into that. And if you meet me, you know, it's not going to take very long before I start getting really passionate about how God has challenged me to share this question and what it means and this idea, this philosophy, this whatever you want to call it. It's, It's simply love Jesus. And it's it's changed my life, and God has called me to share it with others. And you know, Aaron is a huge encouragement to me because he keeps pushing me forward, encouraging me to finish my book. Simply love Jesus is the title of the book, and he's he's a big supporter, and so I'm very grateful for him. And I just want to take a moment to to express that. And you know, if you're a dedicated listener, we would we would really appreciate it if you would leave a comment on our social media uh just just letting us know how much Aaron means to you so so yeah cool news some cool news before we dive into the content november 1st november 1st the 1st of november our website is going to be launching so simplylovejesus.com will be live and on that website we'll be selling a, what i call faith action apparel so we only have we'll only have a couple T-shirts available and a hoodie, but I'm really intentional with them. Uh, if you follow me on social media, and you can do that by following me at Caleb S. Davis, but if you follow me, you will cons- you will usually see me wearing a couple specific shirts or hoodies, and they say, "How can I pray for you?" 
or they'll say simply love Jesus. And you know, this those those shirts and those hoodies were originally designed for my discipleship uh, process program thing, and it was usually exclusive to those people. But we had so many strangers, and you know, those hoodies they say or t shirts they say, "How can I pray for you?" Which is really big. And through that, it's, you know, about every single day, I'll pray for about 10 people every day because someone will walk by and they'll say, wow, that's a, that's a cool shirt. I like your shirt. Or they'll just straight up say, how can I pray for, or how, here's how you can pray for me. And if someone compliments me or just mentions it or anything, I would just say like, yeah, how can I, how can I pray for you right now? <laughs> how, how can we do this right now? We're going to pray to the Lord. <laughs> and so many people were asking where we, they can get that shirt or that hoodie and, you know, after the 200th person to have asked me, I was like, finally, like, all right, we're going to put this out there for other people to jump on to this as an opportunity. So November 1st, you can go on the website, simplylovejesus.com. And what that does is it supports the mission of Simply Love Jesus, which is to teach this lifestyle to all people, but to, to bring awareness to the need for every Christian to follow the greatest commandment or if you follow this podcast regularly the bestest command which is to love god with all your heart soul mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself our mission is to bring awareness to that fact and to bring awareness that every christian needs to do that because we live in a world where the perception if you've been following this podcast like this whole series we've been following how the perception of christians is that we're not a persecuted people we're the persecutors and so our our mission for simply love jesus as an organization is to bring awareness for every christian to, to follow that command wholeheartedly, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, to make God the object of your obsession. Like we've talked about, that was our very first episode and what we talked about. And the need for us to love our neighbors ourself. That Those two commands form the greatest, the bestest command, the greatest commandment. That's what Jesus called it. And so, yeah, November 1st, if you want those hoodies, you want to jump on board and be a light in wherever you go and literally just have ministry opportunities come to you by just wearing a, a, a shirt and a hoodie that's actively inspires action. Like it literally feeds you opportunities to pray and be a light in your community and to be good news to others. Then yeah, November 1st, you can go on our website and you can buy one of them shirts or hoodies. And if you are listening to this and you're a youth pastor or you're a leader of like an organization and you want to buy lots of them, then just message me and we'll see if I can cut you a deal and see what I can do. Cause I, I don't personally make them. My, my mommy and daddy, they make them for me. <laughs> no, my mom, my mom runs a business called Never Lose Hope Designs and you know, so graciously cause they, they really are just supportive of what God is doing through me. And so they, they offer their services and are the ones who provide the apparel and they're the ones who produce it. And so uh, most of the, most of the funds, you know, it goes to, to kind of helping pay that off right now. Most of the, all the, the proceeds are kind of helping just create, create content at the moment. But my hope is that we can invest this into churches and invest this into uniting churches later. And, you know, that's a whole nother vision for another day. But anyways, <laughs> we're going into our last week of taking back religion. Oh, but it's it's a, every good thing needs to come to a close. I think it's been a very fascinating conversation. And so yeah, here's to episode part 6 of taking back religion. <laughs> I think there's no better way to conclude this episode than starting by just kind of putting a nice little bow on top and packaging it all together. So if you've been following us, the first episode, it's been a growing trend for several decades now to paint relig organized religion as the problem within Christianity. And so you hear that through various phrases. Um, the one that I heard the most growing up was that Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with God. And there's been many theologians, churches, whoever, that they have, have continued to build upon this idea. And it's come to the point where now we are, we are, people are having bad word association 
in believing that, oh, religion is actually the problem. When originally, no, that wasn't the problem. That was just a sexy spin we tried to say to describe legalism and other problems within Christians or whatever. And that's a problem. That's a problem because the reality is, and what we're trying to help people understand is that religion is not the problem. Sin is the problem. And in fact, religion is a beautiful thing. And so in episode one, what we talked about is how we brought it back to Abraham and we brought it back to Abraham as an example of why God actually wants Christianity to be a religion. You know, um, there's a guy, I'm not going to say his name, but he had, there's a documentary that he did and in his documentary, he's a very well-known, well, was a well-known pastor. And then, you know, just, he came up with some controversial thoughts and, um, came up with a book. It was very controversial and, and, you know, he's, he's kind of pushed out of evangelical of circles and you know that's a sad story but in staying on focus he came out with the documentary recently and in his documentary he talked about how jesus would have been appalled at the idea of someone starting a religion in his name and that's not true because when you understand the bible and you actually understand uh even the old testament and the prophecies and all this stuff and even the language of jews and laying all just understanding the cultural context and what jesus was actually saying uh he would have wanted a religion started in his name because he's God. And there's so many indicators, and I can go into the Bible and just nerd nerd out, but we'll be here for a couple hours if I did that because I'd have to explain everything. Anyways, so anyways, the the, helping us understand that religion is not the problem. We look at Abraham, and this is what we talked about the first episode. We look at Abraham, and God promised Abraham. He said, you know, I'm going to make you into a great nation, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And through you, all nations will be blessed. Uh, and the word blessed is to, to, be, to show favor or to, to set apart is another way that you can look at it, but to show favor upon. And what God did not do, he wanted to set apart Abraham to be an example to all nations. But what God did not do is he didn't tell Abraham, hey, you're not going to be a nation. I know we're going to be an example to all nations, but you're not going to be a nation. You're going to be a family and we're going to hold hands and it's going to be beautiful. No, like God said you're going to be a nation. You're going to be an example of the greatest nation, which is a nation that trusts in God and trusts in the, in the wisdom of God and strives to reflect him, be an image bearer, and reign over the earth by trust through trusting the wisdom of God. Uh, and you're going to be an example of that, and you are going to have favor by and helping all nations have favor through that. Uh, so God was very specific, like, hey, you're going to be a nation. And in the same way, as a religion, God would not sit here and, and tell us, Hey, you're not going to be a religion. You're going to be, we're going to have a relationship and it's going to be special. Yes. No. In the same way as Abraham was called to be a nation, we as Christians, we are called to be a religion. We're an organized religion. And that's a good thing. Why? Because we're an example of the greatest religion. We are to be, we are being set apart to be an example to others, what true, authentic religion looks like. So Christianity is a religion, and it's a relationship. It's both. It's not one or the other. It's a religion expressed through a relationship with God. So episode two, we, we kind of explained why people had an issue with us being an organized religion in the first place. So episode two, I kind of took us into a little dive into history and kind of gave some background as to who Christians are, where we came from, helping us understand that Christians were persecuted people, persecuted by Jews and by Romans, and even Jews. Like you go back and there's this growing trend, there's this pattern that's being set up that you see the Jew that like, goes back to the the Hebrews, the Hebrews or Jews is the same thing, but the the Jews were a persecuted people who were persecuted by the Egyptians, and then God liberated them. Woo! Let my people go, like you know the Moses story, Exodus. They get liberated, but then what happens? You fast forward however many you know years and and stuff like that, and they become the persecutors. So the persecuted gets liberated, 
from their persecution. They get comfortable, and then selfish the selfish nature within their hearts corrupts them, and then they become the persecutors, and they try to manipulate the behaviors of people, behavior modification, and all of these things, and they try to rule the people versus allowing God to shape their hearts. Er. So then Christians came out of this. They were people who trusted and believed that Jesus, their rabbi, is the Messiah and that he's God. And that he rose from the dead and he appeared to 500 witnesses and his disciples and even his enemies believed that he was raised from the dead. Um, and so these Christians, they're being persecuted. And then 325 AD, Christianity was established as the religion of Rome. And they didn't stop. They, they were no longer persecuted. But then the same pattern happens. Time goes on. They get comfortable. Lack of persecution. They get comfortable. The selfish nature and the sin within the hearts of, of, of all people corrupts. And then over the course of time, now they were once the persecuted. And now we are now perceived as, the, as they became the persecutors. And so that, you know, is the Catholic Church and all this stuff because there wasn't like, you know, Catholics are Christians. Like, I'm not going to. I'm going to sit here and say that they're not Christians. They are Christians. But the Catholic, the, the Catholic Church, they became the persecutors, you know, the Protestant movement. And we were the Protestants. They were persecuted by the Catholic Church because there's a Reformation. And what happens? The Catholic Church persecutes the Protestants. And what happens? Well, we become an independent nation. Protestants, they're in America. They, you know, they kind of focus hyper focus in America in North America and then we get comfortable and the same pattern happens the same pattern happens and so episode 3 or part 3 picking up from there what happens we we fast forwarded a little bit in history and we had this thing called the first great awakening and what happened people became stagnant and religion was kind of boring and so church was on the decline. And so this thing happened, the first great awakening. And there was this big emphasis on how we are sinners and we need to be saved from our sin. And God is angry at us. And er, God is an angry God. And he hates you. And you need to for repent of your sins or you're going to go to hell. <laughs> and it was big fear tactics. And that created mass conversion. But the problem is that what we addressed and what we talked about is that when you are the, using fear tactics and scare tactics to scare people into converting, one, isn't biblical. Two, or at least not in accordance to how Jesus commanded his followers. Two, that's not going to create lasting faithfulness. It's like the equivalent of someone holding a gun to your head and saying, I love you. Believe it, I love you. Like It's a weird imagery, but that's kind of what we did with these messages of like sermons, for example, like sinners in the hands of an angry God and these other infamous sermons of of scaring people into in judgment houses and hell houses or whatever you call them now. And, and these things where you're scaring people to believe in Jesus. And uh, the point of all that is it's creating what it does is 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 it created copycats and it created people who believe that the proper way to convert people was with these these quick conversions these quick results and we measured these results by these people who decided that when they're scared and then and then i don't want to go to hell so i guess i'll believe in jesus so i don't go to hell haha <laughs> i'm safe now let me live the way that i want to live like you when you convert people based on these scare tactics that's not going to produce lasting change we need lasting change in the hearts of people and now where we are today is as a result of all these awakenings and these things where people had these bad methodologies of ministering and converting people and not that the people who are saved not that let me correct this a little bit because i don't want to give you the wrong idea i'm not saying that like those conversions were not real or that everyone who was converted during these great awakenings is somehow not a christian or that they're somehow uh, i'm not saying any of that because through that you do have authentic love for god but that but not everyone there's a lot of people today who have some mis i don't even know what you would it's a very shallow misguided faith and it's a mis 
it's a misguided sense of zeal and passion for God that's that's not reflective of who God is as, at all. And there are a lot of people like that today. And those types of people are the ones who are creating the problems that we see today and the pushback against Christianity and the pushback against organized religion. So let me clear, let me just clarify one more time. I'm not saying that like somehow every person who was saved and converted during like these great awakenings and stuff like that, that they're somehow not Christians or they somehow don't have authentic faith because of the messages that draw drew them to God. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm saying there are definitely plenty of people who truly have sincere love for God and these messages touched their heart. And in the midst of that, after their conversion, they they read the Bible and truly understood what the Bible actually says. Um, but what I am saying is that these messages also, at what cost? You know, are, is the, does the ends justify the means? And I just don't think they do. I don't think they do. I look at the culture that we live in today, and I'm I purposefully surround myself with people who do not believe in God. I purposefully do that. Why? Because I'm not, I refuse to be blinded by surrounding myself only with people who believe what I believe and only people who think the way I think. That creates such a polarized worldview and a blinded worldview in, the, in this, and it's not reality. I surround myself with with. Plenty of people who do not think the way I think, who do not believe what I believe. Why? Because I need to understand what their world is like and how they perceive the things that are going on around them. And what I see through the eyes of these people who I've surrounded myself with who don't believe in God, who don't agree with Christianity or anything like that, I see big problems. And I see. Christianity from two different perspectives and on there's one perspective which is the truth of what Christianity actually is and I see that through the lens of how God has shaped my heart and the hearts of so many influential people in my life and years of ministry and and showing the love of God and the actual experiences that I have had which have shaped my life and have changed my perception and that's the truth of what Christianity actually is and what God desires. But my other perspective of Christianity is through the eyes of the people who have been hurt by the church, who, through the eyes of the people who only see Christianity as a persecutor, they see them as the enemy, as the people who are backwards thinking. They see them as people who are angry and and hateful, and judgmental, and cold, and I see it very clearly, and I see what they see, so when people talk to me, and they tell me that they don't like Christians, and they tell me they don't like the church, and, all, and they just go on their angry rampages, I don't argue with them, and I say, you got a point, because I see what you see, and I'm not going to defend that, I'm not defending that, all I can say is, that's not what God wants. So I would agree with you that there is a problem. And I'm just sorry that you felt hurt that way. That's what I do. So last episode, sorry, I went on a huge tangent there. <laughs> so last episode, me and Aaron, we, we talked about getting, some pr getting practical. Like how do you reclaim organized religion like how do you change your thinking and we kind of reclaim that and take how do you take back religion one way that you can and this is what we talked about last episode one way that you can take back religion is saying it as it is so what we mean by that is proper word association so when someone says well i just don't like religion ask a question well what about it do you not like and if they say something along the lines of like Oh, I just don't like how legalistic it is or whatever. Then let's say, well, then that's what you don't like is the, you don't like legalism. But that's not what the religion of Christianity proposes. It's not what it's about. So you say it for what it is. If you don't like angry Christians, then say you just don't like angry Christians. Or you, if you don't like, I don't know, just, I'm, I wish I could give like solid examples. If you don't like how like, bigoted Christians are. Don't blame that and say, um, don't blame that on religion. Blame it on bigoted 
Christians. Like <laughs> blame it on 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 prejudice and you don't like prejudice, you don't like bigots, you don't like what whatever. You know, be specific. Be specific and say it say what it is for what it is. Don't be specific. And then ask for clarity. Don't just say don't be okay with just someone saying, "Well, I just don't like organized religion or I don't like Christianity." Or the religion, or whatever. Like, ask for clarity. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you, what do you, what not like about it? And then name the specific. If if it's for them, it's uh, they don't like how you know prejudice or or hateful or whatever. Then call it out for what it is. Oh, so you don't, you just don't like hateful people. Well, cool. The religion of Christianity doesn't propose that, anyways. So, um, yesterday, was it yesterday? Maybe. So I was on Facebook and my, my cousin, my cousin had reshared this guy, um, who was very upset because this, I'm going to find it for you. Um, so there's this church called all scripture Baptist church and the pastor is like Jared Paris. So this person who had posted on Facebook posted a message, a private message by this person. Apparently this, this pastor actually, you know what? I'm going to play a clip. I'll play an audio clip of some of the things that this pastor says. Now, these clips are from their actual their church's YouTube page, and this church has a rotation of different of different pastors, and so they'll have a rotation of different pastors play. And it recently made the news, and so I found a clip which has like a compilation of different clips from the church's YouTube page. So this is all public. Now, before this plays, I do want to warn you: this is pretty graphic and intense um and so if you are like me and you're going to hear this and get really frustrated then you can go ahead try to skip a couple like skip about a minute forward (laughs) um these clips actually all come from this church's youtube channel uh, and so i gathered this from another local news station so yeah just brace yourself it's it's pretty intense and it's it's very frustrating to me and i in no way am condoning what this guy said yeah i just need to i just need to put that all out there before you hear it so just brace yourself okay (laughs) the united states government or local government knox county government tennessee government should put murderers to death right should put rapists to death should put kidnappers to death should put adulterers to death should put sodomites to death homosexuality it should still be a crime people just like murder, Amen. rape, and all of these things. It Amen. should still be a crime. But the government should do their job. Right. Instead of running radar on the interstate, why don't you go arrest some queers? How about that? Because the Bible says the powers that be are ordained of God, and God has instilled the power of civil government to send the police in 2019 out to these LGBT freaks and arrest them and have a trial for them. And if they are convicted, then they are to be put to death. You know what I mean? If you're a policeman, then you know what? It should be your responsibility to carry these things out. You bring them to the judges, and you let the judges hear the calls, and you put that animal to death. So you can hear how wrong this is. And so this person, he posted this, he messaged this person, and he said that, you know, if I were to hear that sermon, I would have likely killed myself as a child. It's just not right. Stand, Stand up against hate. And then the pastor messaged him back and said, you still can. Go ahead. I pray you will freak. Like That's a horrible thing to say. And that's not biblical at all. That's not what Jesus wanted. This is a person who's manipulating the Christian religion to meet their hate and prejudice against this, you know, this person who's he's LGBT lifestyle. And I'm not here to affirm or, con- or condemn it or what. That's not, I'm not going to have that conversation right here. Regardless of the point, I don't care who the person is, you should never, ever have such blind hatred towards a person because the Bible specifically tells us in 1 John chapter 4 that he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. <laughs> Understanding that like we have it is our love for God that converts people to Christianity. It is our love for them and our willingness to push through persecution and hardship. It's always about you ever notice the Bible? It's always about resisting sin. It's not about going out and shaming the world and telling them they're wrong. All these things call that problem out for what it is. So that was our, our practical point for the last episode. 
And other than that, you know, I'm, I think one, one really practical thing that I would want to at least hinge this episode on is really to be able to take back religion. You really need to know God. You need to know who God is. You know who he is as a person. The, one of the best ways you can know who God is as a person is getting into your Bible, getting into the scriptures. Because when we dive into the scriptures and we read it, and we look at the narrative and the story that's being laid across the scriptures, we understand who God is, what he wants, what makes him happy, and by that we then know how to best love him and show him that we love him and serve him. When we know who God is, we understand his desire for us to be set apart and to be an example to the world. So taking back religion is understanding that God wills for each and every one of us to be an example to others and how we serve them and how we explain to others that our religion is the best religion. And we show that through our service and our love and affection and our generosity and our servant heartedness. That is how we show people these things. And we help show them so that they can know who God is. That is like, that's all the mission. That's the mission and the, and the purpose of our, of our religion is to love God. Our purpose is to love God with everything we have so that we can love others and prepare the world for Jesus's return. I just, I wonder what it would look like if we all could just simply be specific and change our language to reflect and to show people that religion is not the problem. I think we would have, we would see Christians who would be much more reverent for what church is and it, and the community. Because here's the, here's the, the, the real, the real thing about what religion is, is we have these, these conceptions of what religion does. And the, and the, the problem is that the conception of what religion does to Christians is not what the religion of Christianity states. So I'll give some examples. Typically, I believe when someone explains that religion is the problem or that Christianity is not a religion, I think what they picture are these people who live such unenthusiastic lives and are so controlled in their behavior and controlled like everything is micromanaged and it is very um legalistic and all these things but that's not what the religion of christianity is you know what would happen if people embrace the true religion of christianity you would see people who care for others who are generous who serve passionately serve the poor they passionately serve the outcasted and are compassionate. They have a longing for intimate community. They have a longing to be surrounded with each other and to build each other up and to speak life into one another. They are people who are enthusiastic and passionate about God and loving others. And in the midst of persecution, they, they, they consistently resist the temptation to do evil and to lash out, but they take that and, and instead they, they love others uh, despite persecution and they keep pushing forward. Does that sound like something you would want to be a part of? <laughs> because that's the Christian religion. It's these people who are so loved by God and then by God's love for them, they love God and they love, they simply love Jesus. And they're so focused on the kingdom of God and, and bring and preparing the world by trying to see heaven and earth come together again and preparing it for when Jesus comes back, that we would see a new heavens and a new earth. The Christian religion is, is, 
it transforms people to be good stewards of what God has given us, to be good stewards of the earth. And as literally, go back to Genesis chapter 1, as our, 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 our the creation account, our literal, our our commission by God was to be good stewards of the earth, to reign over the earth and to govern it. How good are we governing our 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 planet, our our city, the people around us, whatever? How how good are we are we stewarding that? The religion of Christianity helps shape us to be people who would be good stewards of that and the relationships around us. And like this is these are all good things. To be loving and patient and kind with others, to be surrounded in good community, to be surrounded by people who love God and who are just so passionate about loving others and serving others and be always looking for opportunities to do good for others. Man, that sounds like something I would love to be a part of. That kind of authentic community. But that's what the religion of Christianity actually is, shapes people to be. I wonder what the world would look like if we just understood that. I believe it can still happen. And so my my prayer is that as you've listened to these six episodes, hopefully your heart has just been burdened with believing the lie. Like I, 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 my prayer is that those who would listen to this, these episodes, would be burdened by the fact that they've believed this lie that Christianity is not a religion. That that's a lie. That's not what God wants. God wants us to be a religion, and that you would in turn realize that the beauty of what a true Christian looks like comes from the religion of Christianity and that's what she, and it's it's a beautiful thing that we're an example to others. We can we can be that example. We can still be that example. My prayer is that we would long to be the people who would reflect to the world what it looks like to love God with everything that we have so that we can love others and prepare the world for Jesus to come back. That we would be a people who would reflect what the scriptures truly teach us. That reflects that we'd be loving and patient and kind with others and resisting but yet passionate and moving forward and filled with joy and share that joy with others. And when people look at us and we're persecuted and we're going through trials and we're going through hardships that people would look at us and they would say how do you keep pushing forward how do you keep pushing forward how do you keep pushing forward no matter all the bad things that keep happening and then we would turn to them and we just say it's because I i love jesus it's because i love jesus i simply love jesus and if that person says, man, I want to know what you know, I want to have what you have, then you can invite them and to say, come check out my religion. It's beautiful. And, and you, can, you can have that in your life as well. Wouldn't that just be amazing? Wouldn't that just be wonderful? Oof. It can still happen. It's, a, it's in your hands. It's in your hands. My hope is that your heart, just through listening to these, podca- these podcasts, can just be just inspired a little bit by God to just make that change and start changing your vocabulary and realizing that we are a religion, and that's a good thing. If we're going to be the example. It's going to be great. Well, I think that's a good way to wrap it up. I think it's a good way to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for been tuning into this to this series of Taking Back Religion. Man, we would just love for you to engage with us on through social media and uh, just tell us what you think. Um, you know, everything that we say. I know I, I was thinking about this earlier today, and I know we don't necessarily explicitly talk about specific scriptures in some of these episodes but please know that like that's not because we don't know the scriptures or anything like like everything that we talk about is literally riddled with 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 all the the knowledge that we have of the bible and it's just weaved in within that and my hope is that you would also 
through your love for Jesus would be engaging in God's word and can see evidence of what we talk about just weaved all throughout scripture. Um, and so, so yeah, I'm, I want to do my best moving forward to, to incorporate more scripture. Uh, but yeah, uh, parting thoughts is remember November 1st, check out simplylovejesus.com. Uh, tell your friends about it. It's there. I mean, you only have a couple options. Literally, you have two options. You have a shirt or a hoodie that says, how can I pray for you? And a shirt that says simply love Jesus. And my hope is that you would buy one of them and that you would wear it because they're inspired to, or they're designed to inspire others to take their faith and do something with it. it is to do something as simple as, as praying for people. <laughs> and so November 1st, yeah, buy yourself a hoodie and buy buy a shirt. Uh, the, the cost is only to help just make ends meet with that the cost that it takes to make those shirts so we're not we're not aiming to get profits from it so uh yeah i hope you've all really just gained something positive from these episodes and yeah we would really appreciate if you just reached out uh, and just let us know you can reach out through twitter and or or instagram uh, at slj ministries and yeah have a great day and let us know how we can pray for you you guys are great um yeah (laughs) have a great day guys let me tell you the songs that will be that are being used today uh, one of them is Blue Sky by C-Y-G-N. C-Y-G-N. Blue Sky is the name of the song. Uh, another one of the songs that we used is uh, Florid- Floridomi? Floridomi by Lakeside. Or maybe it's Lake. Maybe the song is Lakeside by Floridomi. Domi. Floridomi. I'm going to get that right one day. <laughs> and then another song that we used is uh lakey and inspired uh lakey inspired uh sadie so i think the 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 artist is sadie and the song is lakey inspired it's a interesting title but so all of these songs are provided by chill hop music and they just so graciously allow us to use this music in our podcast and all they ask is for us to use the credits um i love chill hop music they i love all their beats it's just super i mean you've you've heard the music it's it's yeah it's good stuff so uh you know feel free to go listen to their stuff they don't pay for they don't pay us or anything they just allow us to use their music and we give them courage because it's good stuff i love their music it's good so uh yeah you guys you guys have an amazing day and let us know how we can pray for you booyah